Driving along Chicago's bustling highways, whether it's I-80, I-294 near the Thornton Reservoir, or passing by West 47th Street near McCook, you might catch a glimpse of something massive. These are former rock quarries, now transformed into reservoirs, part of a sprawling 110-mile tunnel network hidden 90 meters beneath Chicago's busy streets and towering skyscrapers. Together, they form one of the largest civil engineering projects in the world. Known as the Deep Tunnel System, its main purpose is to capture stormwater and sewage during heavy rains, keeping it out of Chicago's rivers and Lake Michigan. But despite its scale and ambition, recent events have shown that it might not be enough. Could this $4 billion project fail to protect Chicago? Let's find out. The planet is changing, and we're seeing the effects everywhere. From intense heat waves and raging wildfires to rising sea levels, worsening water scarcity, and more frequent and severe flooding. Just recently, in August 2024, severe thunderstorms caused widespread flash flooding across the northeast US, hitting New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey particularly hard. An emergency was declared on Long Island and hundreds of people were evacuated as floodwaters surged through communities. In Chicago, the story is the same. You might have heard about the flash floods last month that left truck drivers stranded on our streets. Unfortunately, that's just the latest chapter in a long history of water woes. Chicago's struggle with flooding goes way back, starting with its unique geography. The city is built on low, flat land right next to Lake Michigan. This has made it a magnet for floods. As the city rapidly expanded in the 19th century, inadequate sanitation and sewage disposal led to severe public health issues. The Chicago River, running through the heart of the city, became a dumping ground for sewage and industrial waste, turning it into a heavily polluted waterway. In response, Chicago undertook some remarkable engineering feats. One of the most audacious was literally raising the city several feet in the late 19th century. Using hydraulic jacks, entire streets, buildings and even blocks were lifted to improve drainage and sanitation, allowing for the installation of a more effective sewer system. Another groundbreaking solution was the reversal of the Chicago River in 1900. To prevent sewage from contaminating Lake Michigan, the city's drinking water source, engineers undertook the monumental task of reversing the river's flow. This project redirected the river away from the lake and into the Mississippi River system, significantly reducing pollution in Lake Michigan. But as the city grew and the population surged, these solutions were no longer enough. The severe limitations of the existing infrastructure and accelerated the push for a more comprehensive solution. The solution? The Deep Tunnel Project, or the Tunnel and Reservoir Plan, TARP. This massive project was designed to capture and store excess stormwater and sewage during heavy rains, preventing these from inundating the city and polluting its waterways. Approved in 1972, the Deep Tunnel Project was ambitious, aiming to create a vast underground network to capture and store stormwater and sewage, preventing them from overwhelming the city's existing sewer system and polluting its waterways. Construction of this engineering marvel began in 1975, marking the start of phase one, the tunnels. Over the next three decades, workers excavated a 110-mile network of tunnels, ranging from nine to 33 feet in diameter and positions between 200 and 350 feet underground. These tunnels were designed to intercept and convey combined sewer overflows, CSOs, during heavy rains, dramatically reducing the frequency of CSOs and improving the water quality in the Chicago River and Lake Michigan. By the time Phase 1 was completed in 2006, it had cost approximately $3.1 billion. But the investment paid off by significantly enhancing the city's ability to manage stormwater and sewage. With the tunnels in place, the next challenge was providing sufficient storage capacity for the captured stormwater and sewage. Phase two, which began in 1990, focuses on constructing massive reservoirs designed to hold excess water during heavy rainfall. 
This phase includes several major reservoirs. Majewski Reservoir, completed in 1998, with a capacity of 350 million gallons and cost $44.8 million. McCook Reservoir. Phase 1 was completed in 2017, offering an initial capacity of 3.5 billion gallons, with plans to expand to 10 billion gallons by 2029. Cost $980 million for completed and under construction portions. Thornton Reservoir completed in 2015 with a capacity of 7.9 billion gallons with cost of $450 million. The total projected cost, including both phases, is estimated to reach approximately $10.4 billion by the time it's fully operational in 2029. Since its completion of the tunnels and some reservoirs in 2006, combined sewer overflows CSOs, have been cut nearly in half from an average of 100 days per year to approximately 50 days per year. The Thornton Reservoir has even eliminated them entirely within its service area since 2020. The McCook Reservoir and its tunnels have prevented a staggering 120 billion gallons of polluted water from entering waterways. It's no wonder that the Chicago River, once a notorious open sewer, now teems with over 60 species of fish, a testament to the improved water quality and ecological recovery. Moreover, the project's flood management capabilities have shielded an estimated 1.5 million structures from flooding, addressing the city's long-standing drainage issues. While the deep tunnel has undoubtedly made Chicago a cleaner and more resilient city, the question remains, is it enough? Unfortunately, no, and the summer of 2023 was a tough reminder of its limitations. On July 2nd, as heavy rains loomed over Chicago and its suburbs, the system seemed ready. Tunnels were nearly empty and the McCook Reservoir was only 17% full, but the rain came too fast and too hard. Overflow pipes across the area began releasing a toxic mix of sewage and runoff into the waterways. By afternoon, the system was so overwhelmed that officials had to release over a billion gallons of polluted water into Lake Michigan, the city's drinking water source. Chappelle Wells, a resident of Cicero, whose basement filled with waist-deep water, voiced the frustration. They've been talking about the deep tunnel, but even when it's finished, it won't be enough. This $4 billion project is struggling to keep up with climate change. The science supports these worries. A 2010 study for former Mayor Richard M. Daly predicted a 50% rise in heavy rain events by 2039. The kind of storms that overwhelm the deep tunnel and lead to sewage dumping into Lake Michigan. By the end of the century, these storms could increase by 160%. The evidence is already there. Since 2008, 40 billion gallons of runoff and waste have been dumped into the lake, three times more than in the previous two decades. Even with the deep tunnel, Chicago's fight against water isn't over. The deep tunnel is a powerful tool in Chicago's fight against flooding and pollution, but it's clear it can't do the job alone. Climate change is hitting harder than ever. It's not just about one big fix, it's about a whole bunch of smaller ones working together. First up, the rivers and streams are being given a makeover. Channels are being widened and deepened so water can flow more freely. Flood control reservoirs are also being built, functioning like giant rain barrels to catch and hold excess water during storms. Next, old leaky sewers are being upgraded. Some are being fixed while others are being replaced entirely. Stricter rules are now being enforced for new developments, ensuring they don't worsen the flooding problem. Green infrastructure is being introduced, like rain gardens, special pavements that let water soak through, and the planting of more trees and native plants. These green solutions help absorb rainwater right where it falls, reducing pressure on the sewer system. And there's more on the horizon. Huge underwater storage tanks are planned for the west side to prevent basement flooding. There's also talk of a brand new 10-mile tunnel to protect even more homes. Recently, a $20 million investment in stormwater management projects across Cook County was announced. All of these efforts show that the fight against flooding and pollution in Chicago is being taken seriously. 
It's clear that no single fix can solve a problem this big. The city is adapting and preparing for a future where extreme weather is becoming more common. So what do you think? Will these efforts be enough to protect Chicago? Or is more still needed? Your thoughts are welcomed in the comments. If this video was helpful, a like, share and subscribe are encouraged to stay updated on the world's biggest and most important mega projects. Don't forget to hit the bell icon for updates.